Bibbing, we're live. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flory Model live Saturday show. Are we all blurry eyed and bushy tailed? <laughs> Wide awake. Wide Wide awake. awake. Absolutely. That's it. Never mind. Well, I trust you're all doing very well this morning. Uh, looks like we're all good here. Stream is up and running. We've got sound. I think we're all good. Just in live chat, if you can give us a uh, thumbs up that you can hear us and see us before we uh, get going. Yep. Uh, that's it. Uh, looks like we're all good. Very good. Here in Melbourne, it's 24 degrees yesterday. Cold and wet. 13 today. Well, there you go. Not good. All good. Look at that. Satellite delays working brilliantly this morning. That's it. <laughs> a bit of lag, so we're doing an auction. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We need an auction now. A massive amount of lag. Uh, so that's it. Frederick's also in uh, the live chat on, uh, what's it called? YouTube. So that's good. Papa Mike's in as well. That's all good. Loads of you in this morning. That's it. Now, because I can have it. There we go. Online. I'll tell you what, there's loads of the Flory family in. Jesus. There is. Uh, there is. There's actually loads of them. My word. You know why, though, don't you? Or apart from Chris, who's clearly he's tomorrow's people, isn't he, over there? So, uh, very good. Oh, we're going to have lots of Aussies and New Zealanders because they're all locked down, aren't they? Oh, they're on back on their lockdown over there, are they? I believe so. Okay, don't knock it. We're going to be locked down again soon. Just saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> back to the live shows, everyone. <laughs> oh, God. Lockdown live shows. Here we go. Never mind. Anyway, we're all good. Nathan, how are you? I'm all right. Good, good, good. A, yeah, because it's a nice sunny day, believe it or not. A bit cloudy today. Gorgeous yesterday. We mowed the lawn at half past eight last night. It's great. Oh, you were popular with your neighbours. Ah, they love it. <laughs> <laughs> i've come to the conclusion i need a new mower i've got the cheapest mower you could ever have and the start of safety switch is a bit dodgy so it keeps cutting out as you're going along but you have to hit it so it's fine and after my incident the other week which i told you about and i hit that small stone brick and uh, it's cracked the entire side of the mower and the blade yeah. went out of it and i just bent it into shape so you go along like this and it's cutting out so i'm like <laughs> you know what my 30 pound mower needs replacing i've had it like 10 years so uh yes it would need a viking burial that one when it goes but i uh, have said for next year we'll have a new mower and definitely something with a bit more that doesn't just mulch grass that actually cuts sure. would be nice so um, uh ours anyway as has had it because of it in stones yes since we the garden and it just like batters stones like say don't half wreck your blades done it oh definitely it's the bit you're going along and it whacks a stone and the stone goes flying off and then you hear someone's greenhouse four well, hours hey, up <laughs> hey, you should say that because i was talking to Bryn, hmm. and his uh nick was which is his wife yeah. was cutting the lawn mm -hmm. hit a stone and put it through her car window oh yeah I've, I've... put the rear window through <laughs> it's just like Oops. Whoops. Yeah, definitely. Oops, that was I don't think you were impressed to be honest, but there you go. No. So no. um yeah. No. The joys of joys of gardening. That's and it gets dangers. expensive. I must admit my other half the other day, because we've got a bit of gravel in the carport and then it's like a the drive, she was kicking the stones back onto the gravel in the carport and then obviously hoofed one and it went flying off and it hit my car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Oi, knock it off! You put me windscreen through <laughs> doing that, but she's kicking the stones in, and it's like ting straight off the front of it. So yeah, she's popular. <laughs> As I say, we ought to buy a goat. Yes, that's what you or need. Alpaca. Everyone needs a goat. Alpacas eat grass, don't they? I think so. What after mm. Geronimo? Bless him. Or Geronimo. Or Geronimo's gone. All right, <laughs> he's, Geronimo. Things riddled with TB. <laughs> but. Yes. Anyway, uh, good morning to everybody. I just saw somebody's birthday. Whose birthday is it? Model Time's birthday today. So happy birthday, modeling time. Who's got a happy birthday, birthday today? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Anyway, all good. So you know the format for what we do. It's literally modeling. General chit chat, all the rest of it. If you've got any questions, like we said before, please post them up and then we will get to them because obviously we've got both lots going and all the rest of it, but because they move really, really quickly, often we don't see them because obviously we're talking, we're working down. So if we don't answer your question, just keep posting it up and it'll catch our eye and then we'll do it. Unless we, we what we need to do is that thing where you can pay to have your questions read out. <laughs> we'll set a limit of 50 quid and we'll answer your questions. <laughs> see if you get one. <laughs> questions. So yes, there we go. So there we go, model time. We do read the chat. So, but again, because we're working, it is that thing. We do a little bit 
like the other shows, we tend to yap and get carried away, but this one we are doing it. So I'm currently working on my Lightning. This is the Airfix Lightning. I'll show it this time because we didn't do it properly last time. Uh, that's the one I'm doing. That's me, been working on it for the last, I don't know, however, but we've done it from opening the box to here. Uh, so obviously we, last time, if you remember rightly, we did the decaling. So all the decals are on, they've all gone on really well. We've got no silver in or anything else like that. So I'm gonna give this a wash in a minute. And whilst the wash is drying, I'm gonna get going on the undercarriage and all the sticky out bits. Uh, and then obviously they can be fitted once the wash is off. And then if we've got time on that one, I'm gonna do some post shading with it. So literally we just come in with the airbrush, post shade, a bit of weathering into this one and things like that, we'll call it quits. Not gonna go massively over the top for it because it's just a quick build on something like this. But uh, anyway, then we can get the gear on and I'm hopefully by the next show, it will be all finished off. So we'll be good going with that. And uh, what are you guys working on? I am going to be carrying on with my URL truck. Very so nice. So I have been actually, doing some video work this week for the first time in, well, about a month or so. See, so you, I see you've got parrot cam on, on your shoulder. <laughs> it's like a parrot. It's <laughs> right. good, isn't it? It is. So there's, because uh, I'm doing this for the Out of Africa group yep. build. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what I've been working on. And let me just see if it works. Hold on. Proper, proper cam. Poly cam on. There it is. There we go. <laughs> so... Uh, as you can see so i've been doing some chipping got the chipping fluids out so i've been using all the worn effects yeah and then obviously the cabs together as well so my plan is this morning is to give all this lot um especially the fuel tank and the inside of the doors and stuff a coat of green so what i've got is some attackers yeah which is to be honest i'm not gonna i'm just making something up for this because it's be old and battered anyway so it doesn't really matter so i've got four bo protective green but i think that's obviously like a world war ii color isn't it and a pale green and a bit of a silk gray mm -hmm. so my plan is is um yeah like i say just to give this a coat of paint i've got the chipping fluid already on i did that when i came in this morning and do some chipping yeah so yeah the like i say the worn effects works so give okay, that a whirl very nice happens. so that's what i'm going to be on with Cool, looking forward to that. And uh, Nathan, what are you up to? I'm going to make a start on my SIG build, my Yak one from Armour Hobbies. Very nice. Is that a new filter you've got in your spray booth, or have you just never used it? Are you I like put Andy? it in about, oh, I put it in like three, four weeks ago. There you go. That's looking very clean. Yeah. <laughs> just like just Andy's. Keep spraying that way so keep the filter clean. Yeah, but this is it. Yeah, they cost a lot of money, those filters. You don't want to ruin them. No. <laughs> what, just, just five for you. I think Chris has just put some up about the studio. Mm. I don't know. You could probably see mine a bit better. But yeah, I'm like, I have to set it up now. It's proper claustrophobic. It Welcome works, to my world. That's but it. it is, it is. If you're planning on ever doing video builds, it is claustrophobic. It is. Because of lighting and where your camera placement is and... As Phil will tell you more than me, he's got a, quite a decent setup now. But before when you first started, you oh, were a bit yeah. like I was at the minute. Tri tripping over cables. You can't Trip even get out of your chair because you have cables I running am. around you and all the rest of it. Oh. And you try and get out just to pop to the loo and it's like Indiana yeah. Jones. You yeah. know, <laughs> we're trying to get out of there. We're being shot yeah. at. It's, yes, it can be a little bit uh, tricky, shall we say. Oh, the power yeah. of TV and all the rest of it. It looks so fluid and nice. But... Uh, I've got the two big lights here mm. hanging over. So obviously there's the cables, all of those. Obviously that camera's here with all the cable. I've got the compressor down this side of me here. Yeah. I've got I've got obviously a block under here with stuff plugged in with the speaker box and yeah. the obviously the the laptops here. So yeah, it can be a little bit um, like I say claustrophobic, but yeah, it's it's good. Yes. Definitely, it, uh, it's one of those things. Sometimes it's really annoying because you have cables and cameras and stuff like that right where you don't want them. But it gives you the better, best look for it. But like yeah. for me, I hate all of this in front of me. Obviously I've got monitors and everything so I can keep an eye. So I've got the laptop running down there that's streaming all of this. I've got the main computer which is running all the show. The two monitors running, so I've got the chat in there. I've got another chat down in there and then this one. All the box of tricks and that. And it's a case of, it takes up space. 
when you're working on stuff, you need the space to spread out. So you have like, you know, I've got cables over the Vulcan in front of me. The Vulcan's down in here and it's got cables running over it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you do have oh, to yes. kind of pre-plan what you're going to need. Yes. Because yeah. once you're sat, well, once I'm sat in here, I can't, I can't mm. really, because obviously this side is where I normally sit when I do with the shows, with mm. the cabinets. Yeah. And my gear's normally there in the drawers. But obviously, getting around here now, like you said, is like a scene from Indiana Jones. <laughs> so I have to bring everything and just make sure I've got it so I ain't got to go over there to get anything. But yeah, it is what it is. It's a, it's good fun. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? It is. It's all it? good part of it. So, yeah, as long as the, um, the footage comes out okay at the end, that's all that matters, really. Yeah, it's just the bit like and it has happened to us, even with us doing things as a group as well, where something fails like a camera's failed to record. That's happened yeah. a lot. That's why I run redundancy, two cameras above, one in front, got the one behind. Uh, but again, the worst one is when you do it or when you look at it and you know, all the footage is there and you're like, great. And then you do edit it and there's no sound. Oh. I've done that a few times. You're like, there's no audio whatsoever or it's really bad. It's got massive echo into it we've had as well and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, Jesus, message you guys, isn't it? Can we do it again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got it's, no I mean, sound. <laughs> I had it into when I was doing that figure. Yeah, and I was doing the fa face, and all you got is my head. Yeah, the yeah. optivizer because the because the camera was where it is now. I'm thinking, oh, that's a good shot. It's quite high, yeah. but literally because I'm quite on top of it, all you've mm. got is me, my head. So I've got to, uh, like I said to you, I've got a feeling I'm going to have to sort of put it here. Yes, it's going to have to be really low in here so mm. I can. And that's yes. the other thing as well. Aesthetically, it's nothing worse than seeing a camera because I'm looking at your yeah. camera now more than you. So yeah. I've got mine just yeah. out of shot and all the rest of it, and that's the thing. But basically, you want a camera here and you want a camera here. That's where yeah. you literally want them, and obviously one above as well. But, you know, again, it's that thing if you've got a camera coming over you, you know, as I say, it's just trying to keep it all balanced. You know, you've got enough camera angles so you at home can see everything that's going on. But obviously we have to see it as well. That's why I can't get over the guys who have a camera in front of them like this. You know, looking forward, I think it's a lovely camera angle, but it would just drive me mad. Because also I've got a camera here, so you would just have a camera looking here. It's okay if you're just doing a, a face down shot. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. you still got to be like this. Try not to knock it so it's not like wobbling <laughs> all the rest of it, you know. So yes, not, uh, not, not to honest, easy. To be honest with you, um, I don't think I'd be able to do that because my eyesight's that like, crap, shall yes. we say? Yes. I, I need to be kind of on top, even with an optivizer on. I don't think because then obviously it's out of focus with the optivizer. Mm. It's getting the right depth of the yeah, optivizer in it. It's, I don't know, it, it does seem an uncomfortable way of filming, <laughs> but if it works for them, then happy days, you know. But fair play, I don't know, Nathan's got best setup, look, he's just yeah. webcam over Red, it's easy done, isn't it? Yeah, just there. That's <laughs> it, perfect. Uh, just a quick word here, James says, good evening from Australia, guys. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Thanks for all your great content. Never miss a video. No problem. Thank you, James. Uh, uh, Sorry, just Paul's asked a question for us about supplying like essential aftermarket bits, so mm. like barrels and harnesses as a complete bundle. Mm. We have, but the problem is with aftermarket, it's vast and it's what to pick. Mm. Um, again, yeah. we've we have spoke about it. But we have thought about doing packages. Uh, so obviously, obviously the Flory family know when we do like pre-orders, we have also thought about doing perhaps, you know, to say harness sets with them, color photo sets, and you buy it as a bundle. But again, it, we've got to try and get those in. And if it's on a pre-order, normally it's the new stuff. Mm. So we, you know, the stuff might not be out for it. So, yeah. you know, it does make it very difficult. But like we said, with aftermarket, people have often said to us, if you thought about carrying Eddard, what, all 8 billion lines that they do, can you imagine? Poor old Andy, you'd never see him again, putting that <laughs> lot on the system. Uh, and again, it, it's it's cheap, small items. It's uh, but the thing is, it's so vast to do it. You can imagine it in the warehouse having it having to be indexed to try and find them all. And, and yeah, you know, certain lines you've got to be really set up really well to carry them. Um, oh. You know, and how many do you keep of them as well? Is it just one or two, or do you need lots of? But when it comes into literally thousands of different products, yeah, that's uh, like Amazon job, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like we've said on. Um space is a bit of a premium here at the minute mm -hmm. anyway yeah uh, you know obviously me and 
me and you discussed something yesterday as well, which mm-hmm. will make it even more of a premium, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. So, so again, never say never. We're never mm-hmm. not going to say we're not going to do it. It's just mm-hmm. obviously the the way. At the moment, yeah. Current you know with the amount of space yeah. that we've got and obviously the funds as well come into it you know it's yeah. not something we do at the moment but like we've always said if you are after specific stuff and we can get hold of it you know tell andy and <laughs> he can probably get it in it's not a problem yeah uh, yeah we'll know. just get it in and add it to your order and actually. we can add it to your order as a bundle and then yeah. and then get it out to you but again it's one of those things we're dependent on what our stockists have uh so sometimes they're out of stock of it so do you want us to hold on to it till we can get them in? But then we don't know when that will be. It's very difficult when you're dealing with small little parts like that. Mm. Um, but yes, Andy's not here today. For everyone wants to know, she, I don't know if you, will you mind us saying what he's doing today? You could always just make something up. Well, I could do. All right, I'll make something up. He's probably <laughs> pissing himself as we speak. <laughs> no, that's not this week. Oh, is that next week? No, <laughs> He's yeah. being probed, just, isn't he? He's being sure probed, gonna, shall we say. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to love you for saying that. Can't <laughs> <laughs> we just be diplomatic? So he's got a hospital appointment Oh, he's today. got a hospital appointment. Okay, so Andy's so, off being probed, shall we say, yeah. today. And um, he'll be wetting himself next week. <laughs> <laughs> he, look, if you're not here to defend yourself, tough. No, that's it. Took him under the bus while he's not here. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> he's down. Uh, Barry's be... saying he's about to be introduced to the Wonders Flory Wash for the first time. Wish me luck. Oh, not a problem. Don't worry, Barry. I'm going to. Oh, shit. Is that him? Is he watching us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it. I bet he is because he ain't gone yet. He's like, oh. Oh, he is. <laughs> It's, a, it's okay, you can tell them. He is watching as well. Shit, been caught out. Is it the MRI today or that? I yeah, Andy, you having your that. MRI or a CT scan? Know. What are you having? Going in one of those big donuts at the hospital. Yes. I, I, think it's, I think he's on his MRI today. Is it MRI today? So he's all right. But he is watching everyone, so look out. He'll be in chat next. <laughs> Do a dab. Anyway, yeah, Barry, I'm going to be with you in a minute because I'm going to be putting some dark dirt wash over this one as well when we get going so if you want to follow along with me doing that one that's what we'll be doing today putting the wash obviously onto this one as we go on right, right. he's having his mri scan oh is he yeah. yes there we go right we've had a question from chris a couple of minutes ago he's building the matchbox wessex mm-hmm. and there's no locating tabs on the bulkhead on the floor so how would you go about getting a good fit and you built that kit? I haven't built that kit, I don't think. No, Nathan. Hmm. My gut feeling was some sacrificial blue tack. Yes, that's a good point. So you put a blob of blue tack on the bottom of the floor and sort of rough get it into place and then just use the extra thin. Mm-hmm. And then you'll lose that blue tack forever. Fortunately, <laughs> but hey. Never to be seen again. Yes. <laughs> that's the only way I, I could think of doing it but couldn't you couldn't you use the blue tack to line it up yeah on mm. one side test fit it if it if it lines up then take it out glue that side of the thing in and then just remove the blue tack mm. you can i mean it, it sort of vaguely it just sort of vaguely sits on so you need to sort of get you can get the right height with the blue tack and then just glue it I'm very surprised with Matchbox because they were very well designed for that, for mm. locating. Yeah. So that's odd why that's missing, but yeah. maybe it is. I think that'll work. I think the blue tack thing might just almost as a jig then, isn't it? The internal jig, if that makes sense. That should work. I mean. Yes, Andy, I've got both lights on. <laughs> I've got to figure, oh, have you got both lights on? Looks a bit dark on, on the top cam. I think he means this cam. All oh, right. Oh, God. Look, is he producing? Backseat producing? <laughs> At least you got your mic on right this week. Yeah. That's not dark, is it? It's a little bit, maybe. But that's only because, as I say, again, you've got that thing. Unless you've got the lights right in it. Well, the big like I can't get them any mm. closer. He's going to have to do some post production then for lighting it up when he yes. edits all this together. 
Right, okay, uh, question in from Dave, he's saying about about to buy a new uh, face mask, which one would we recommend? Personally, I've got a 3M, this is the M7502, which is, uh, hold on, let me go for a, an overhead, let me turn on some cameras here, uh, which is this one. And again, you come with the separate things. The filters you want basically are the brown ones. The brown ones are gases and stuff like that. So your filter number for this one is 6055. But they've all got different colour bands. And the, the brown ones are the ones for, um, you know, gases and all stuff like that. So you're pretty well protected. It's got a particle filter on the outside as well, which looks like... Uh, I'll get these off. Uh, which are these? So get a set of these because otherwise you'll bung your filter up really yeah. quickly you don't want to bung your filter up and you don't want to bung your filter up so uh yeah you just get a set of them uh and away you go there we go look so yes that's those paws so these are five nine one ones and then obviously in here this is the a2 and it's uh 6055 they do different types of these but i was told as long as it's the brown one that's the one we need for this type of work because you're pretty much protected for everything then yeah um but i ran these for a while without the external fluffy filters on and the trouble with it is is you bung up your filters really quick because these you can change out faster than the main cartridge but uh, every now and again as you know i do a little thing saying filter change time so we just change them out but it's really comfortable i like this one it's a comfy one some of them that i've had before really pinch on your face and all the rest of it but it's easy on and off as well so yes very very nice that's the one i would recommend i've been using this one now for a good couple of years now and um, yeah, no problem, still in one bit. But don't forget, when you're spraying lacquers and that, rubbers do deteriorate, so at some point it will die. Deteriorated tin. Yeah. Do I need to mute myself or is that not too uh, bad? Not too bad. If it gets too loud, just tell me I need mm -hmm. it's just kicking in. Right. Okay, so flooring models start dirt wash. This is going over the lightning, as you can see here. Uh, this is, has had a clear coat because we really want this as a panel line wash. If we wanted it to be weathered in any shape or form, then obviously I'd go over a satin coat. Uh, but for this one, to be honest, I just used, so talking to Matt, I'm almost out of glosses. So it's just had a bit of Hitaka uh, clear gloss on here, uh, XP09 nice thin coat nothing massively heavy but what it does do is protect the, the decals from the wash getting underneath it uh, as i said it's not essential but it just really helps because on this one because it's a nice really shiny finish being a metal finish uh it wasn't going to be a problem like if you had added like a flat coat on or something else like that so that's literally that with your wash give it a damn good shake up i mean properly for a few minutes because you this is clay so the clay will be like a sediment in the bottom which if I show you the sand wash here, you can see it. It's got a proper sediment down the bottom. So make sure you give it a good old shake. You can put a brush in it. But again, like we said about contamination, you don't really want to. And then all I do is squirt it down onto the cutting mat. You don't need gallons of it. But you can just put a bit down in there. Clean this brush into the wash. And then all we do is we rub it everywhere. You just work it into all the panel lines circular motions and if you do notice it beads up as in it's really glossy then uh, if you put a little bit of washing up liquid or dishwater soap that'll just help break the surface tension and it'll make it flow into all your panel lines and all your bits and pieces like that and you just slap it absolutely everywhere you go in your wheel wells if you want And because we're only going to give this a light weathering job, this one's going to be just as a panel line wash. And then we're going to come in and we're going to post shade it with some hairbrushing. So, but what you want to do is make sure, like I always say, is you go absolutely everywhere. And you can do touch up paint work afterwards on this one or any areas you need to redo. It's quite happy to be painted over because, as I say, it's just clay clay and water but you want to go everywhere because you don't want any clean bits <laughs> no clean bits no more clean bits 
You can also put it on if you wanted to with an airbrush, which is another nice way. If you're doing armor, um, yeah. in a couple of weeks, you'll see it when I do the, you catch up when I did my Ural truck, I airbrushed it on. So that way it just goes absolutely everywhere. And it's a nice even finish. But, uh, <clears throat> Just go over, and again, you don't need tons of it, it goes on forever. So, the tail pretty good. So, what we'll do is grab some clamps, and just do the tail. I'll find my ruler when I need it. <laughs> right, the classic is we see it sort of beading up on the tail. It's um, I'll go full screen. This is because obviously it's really heavy duty gloss on here. If you keep rubbing at it, it will wear through. But that's the trouble with glosses. When you first put it on, you can see it just beads up, it won't go in. So you, if you get a little bit more washing up liquid, it will just make it flow a bit better. But normally when you're rubbing this stuff off, it will push it into any way you've missed anyway. And that, as we say, is it. So all we're going to do, we're going to let that dry. Make sure you're in everywhere and you can go over you give it multiple coats if you don't like it you can wash it off all the usual things you know how this stuff works so what we'll do we will literally leave that off to one side to dry it'll take around about 20 minutes and then we'll rub it all off so nice and straightforward wax on wax off yes. Yes, as Richard points out, it's because the uh, well, like your white balance is probably just struggling uh, because you've got a white background. If you use green, yeah. it's neutral, um, so you don't have a thing. Because obviously, I've done it when I was doing my thing about textures this week. Camera absolutely hates white, white yeah. and silver. You know, so it just needs a bit of contrast in there. Can it be sorted in post editing? <laughs> Not really. Well, you can a bit, but. <laughs> So I'm going to have to get a new background to use then, yeah? I think what it is, is just because you've got a lot of white on there, by the time you, you, you've you sprayed some crap all over it, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just it needs the contrast to pick up with, that's all. Now, now I've got the undercoat on the white, I can paint my green. To be honest, if you've got like white grids on here, the reason I've always used green with a grid and not just a green one or anything else is because the camera can get a good depth on it because it's got something to lock on to. Uh, question for Matt. Did you finish your figure for the Panzer Grenadier with the MG42? No, because that's the one I need to sort out for a camera angle to repaint his face because I did paint the face and then discovered my head was just in the way. Right, so, okay. Um, and to be honest with you, with uh, my daughter being off school all six weeks holidays, everything's been kind of up in there but i say i'm back at it now so i'll figure something out and uh and carry on with that because it must be a bit annoying because obviously the first part's up and that's it so <laughs> hmm. need, to, uh, need to get it finished he's, he's, he's up here so yes it will be done it's not more than where i've just abandoned it like i said i just need to get a better camera angle for, for showing what i'm doing yes because like i say it's not good just looking at the top of my head well, it's a nice head. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of grey in there, as I discovered the other day. <laughs> so, here we Let that dry a minute. Tony wipes his down with a wet wipe after use. Does it? I've joined the conversation clearly far too late. Yeah, 
that's a bit far too much information for me. <laughs> Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly airbrush my tyres and then we'll do the centres off of them and then we yeah. can put the gear together and we'll use a bit of oil wash over those to put back together and then once we've got the wash off which is drying already what we can do is um, post shade it and then I've got a few decals still to go on which will go on afterwards. So <clears throat> what we need is some black I was very lucky actually, I was going through my paint stash and I found yeah. a brand new unopened bottle of LP5. Well, it's all back in stock now, it's not as rare as it used to be. I know, but I was still very chuffed. <laughs> That's your favourite paint, isn't it? It is. LP5, mind you, it, it is good. I do love the colour, it's got that real nice satin look. But it's a solid satin look. It doesn't look like it's a painted effect. I always describe it as like a brand new chassis on a car. It's that colour. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> Tiny dribble left in here. <laughs> yeah. In the old one. I think we're going to have to use the new one. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Rob, I do. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> What's that? Told, told, told the old world what my passcode is, game of phone. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I can't never wear an Apple Watch. Because I yeah. forget to turn it off into like silent mode or whatever. And then technically, everyone would see my messages coming through on camera because I wouldn't spot that, it. I blame Andy for that. It's his fault. <laughs> So let's do a custom mix of Russian green. There you go. Because this will be good, because I forget what I've done when I actually paint the main body, and uh, it's going to be all different colours. See, there you go. This actually shows quite a thing, because me and Matt in this camera here, my overhead, this one, is exactly the same as Matt's. But because I've got crap all over my desk, look, the camera can work it out a bit better. Mine don't look that bad. No, it doesn't. But the, what it is is because you've got a lot of white down there. Because if I took my, this away, yeah, it will probably yeah, start but... playing up. That <laughs> yeah, that's it. But if I do this, my camera will look like yours in a minute. It will start to sort of worry about it. But as I say, if you've got a bit of contrast down in there, it's not so bad. Uh, No, Nathan will have his built by the end of the show. Yep. Um, messing around with the base at the moment. <laughs> Looking at what Alex has done on the forum, the, the yaks go together just quick. Is this your first armor kit then, Nate? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Welcome to the wonderful world. Just trying to do a base. To be honest, I think they are absolutely gorgeous. The detail that they can get now in the 70 second scale kit. Mm. You know, that detail is better than most 48 scale kits. In fact, in some cases, 30 second scale kits. David wants you to build a bust of Lenin for the for the Sigma. <laughs> Not a one of John. Yeah. Did you see I put his photo on the site today? For the yeah. first he shows thumbnail, it's now John. Oh, so much. <laughs> well, I love you for that. Yeah. Pretty 
precision engineering going on here. <laughs> and then if you can get a bust of Lenin, you must be able to from somebody. Probably 3D print one. 3D print one? Yeah. yeah. I need to do Brezhnev after that. <laughs> do all the chairman. Yeah. <laughs> You you pay good money, what, to, for me to paint it or for a bust of lemon? <laughs> <laughs> I need to get John into a 3D scanner. Do. No good, I need to change my block of polystyrene. There's not a lot of polystyrene left. <laughs> So we've got to ask then what's everybody building in chat? Presses down here, not far from the mic. So, what we got here? Something Soviet, says Clint. Uh, Chris is doing an LA5. Nigel's Declan is border model 29. David Anderson's doing his mirror of the Africa build. Trumpy 132nd week 23. Peter's doing a Meng Toon Panzer 38. Tony's doing a Tamiya F14A in VF114. Uh, Chris is doing his T55. Uma model, AT28, there's one for you, Nathan. Uh, a Schmirsch from Paul, an HK Lang from Double Paul. Jason's doing his 27 flanker. Oh, that's a different one. Dirk's doing an RS Cauldron 714 and a Hella H75 Hawk. Different. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Bill's driving special lobby Spitfire. Steve's doing an F4 Phantom. Tony's doing the REM1 recovery vehicle. That's a nice kit. Uh, Bob McCluskey's packing for Cyprus. Nice. He's, he's winning, winning so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it. Two weeks in Cyprus drinking gin. <laughs> nice. Oh, happy day. Holiday. Holiday, yeah. Uh, Scott's doing a Moroccan Sea Fury. John's a T 55B, North Vietnam. Uh, Sean's a Hobby Boss Jack 38. Martin's a MiG 25. Here we go, we've got loads coming in, haven't we? Oh, Martin's doing the new tool day fix. Mozzie, no short shots then, Martin. Yeah, check your exhaust stacks. Check your exhaust stacks, yeah. Eddard, uh, Matt's doing uh, Eddard Limited Edition L39. Albatross for the Out of Africa. Ooh, Tamir SES Jeep with photo etch from David. And Tracy's working on his second cup of coffee. <laughs> hmm. That's a good way to spend a Saturday morning. 
Uh, Richard's watching us from his hospital bed. All right, get well soon, Richard. Get well soon, Richard. Um, so, so will Andy. <laughs> they were watching us from the waiting room. Yeah, apparently he's been in there 12 days and counting. He's what? <laughs> he's been in there for 12 days and counting. Is it that bug that's going round? Uh, James has put his black primer on his Sea Fury. Uh, forgot about gloves and now has hands. <laughs> like I'm weathering black gloves like Matt's as always. The thing is, I always think the worst thing is, is when you go somewhere and you've cleaned your hands off, but your nails have still got paint on. So it looks like you've yeah. painted your nails. That's always an interesting look when you're at the checkout. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nathan, what's the Ninja Star on your desk? Um, I can't remember which medal it is. Which medal? Yeah, it's a Soviet medal. Is this the... Oh, right. I'm just going to... I'm sanding the name plate off here because I'm going to put on it. But I'm going to do a little base like that. I'll find out oh, which medal it is. Is it the Star of Lenin? <laughs> uh, it's one of the... I think I shall tell you in a second. And it is, I've forgotten. It's not the hero of the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. It is the Order of the Patriotic War. Oh, there you go. Which I believe is the one you get for three kills. Right. It's heroic deeds during the Great Patriotic War. There you go. Phil? Yeah? Did you pay your gas dashboard green or are they black? Um, I did mine black. I think they're black, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, no. And, the, and the front? Yeah. I could do, do some research, really. Yeah, no, I did. When I was looking around for them, they all do seem to be black, but dashboard's black. You see that bit, yeah? Down a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's black, isn't it? That's all black, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The floor the seems to be green for some reason. And the top bit, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Thought there was. The floor? Yeah. They always paint the floor, don't they? Yeah, I don't know why the floor is, but you think it'll have a rubber mat on it or something, but apparently not. Hey, that's a bit too uh, extravagant, isn't it? Oh, probably. Yes, it is. Looking hard, that's a bit Apparently it looks like a young Matt and Nathan next to John on that picture. <laughs> Yeah. That's my best Photoshop skills, that you know, that picture. It is, you're very good at it, Nate. Uh, Barry's doing the Airfix Seeking, uh, HAR3. Uh, Rich is working on a MiG 25 for the Bullasig. Uh, Jeff's doing the Airfix 72nd B25. BNNT's doing the 700th Bismarck. Cool. With lots of add-ons. Mm. Right, nice. nice. Very nice. nice. So, uh, what else we got down in here? We've got Tim. He's doing the 32nd BF 109K4. Uh, yeah, so Richard's doing the MiG-29, but he's not allowed to airbrush, clearly in hospital. But yeah, they frowned upon that. <laughs> <laughs> Going in there with all your gear. I'm just setting up here. <laughs> Uh, Travis is working on the Churchill Crocodile. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Uh, Waz, or Wes, is what we're working on the Dornier 17, Z7. Uh, hmm. Adam's just finished showing off the Hong Kong Lancaster. What did you think of it? Yeah, which one? Is that 32nd or 48? Woodhouse has got the Airfix Raw Navy Phantom, just needs decals, so he might take it uh, up to Christmas <laughs> with all of them going yeah. on at will. Uh, he's also got the Dragon Sea Venom nearing completion as well. Nice. Uh, Iron Man's doing the 72nd Matchbox Dornier 28. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Is that like PG Woodhouse? I think so. Uh, we've also got Will's working on the same as you, uh, working obviously on the Ural. 
Uh, uh, Richard's one is the 72nd one. That's oh, not so bad. I think he's doing the 48th one from his hospital bed. That would be funny. Uh, Peter's working on the ICM uh, Model T Ford. Cool. They do bring out some really good stuff, ICM. You are? ICM. You're saying he's doing the Model T Ford? Yeah. There's not a lot of grey in your hair, Matt. I'm doing very well for your age. Are you dying it these days? Okay, again, mate. Sorry. I was just saying, there's not a lot of grey in your hair, or are you dying it these days? Well, you know, a bit of just for men. <laughs> 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 We were discussing this the other night of salt and pepper. I think I'm more leaning towards salt these days. Um, uh, uh, Richard says, it's all right, it's not COVID. Well, he's got a shattered ankle. Oh, nice. And he's, and he's broken his vertebrae in three places. Bloody hell, talk ooh, about ooh, doing a proper job. Yeah. How do you manage that? I mean. Nice. I hope the hospital dinners are upset. Yes. there for that long. Wow. <laughs> Lindsay's cutting slabs for his back garden. <laughs> Bit of one-to-one -one scale modelling. Mm -hmm. uh, John's working on the ATM uh, in 35th scale. Tamia, Matilda, uh, Cromwell, T-34, Jack Panther and uh, Meng King Tiger. Wow. Busy man. Uh, Mike's working on the Zvezda T-80. Uh, James is doing the Airfix Sea Fury and a 30 second Trumpeter Sky Raider. Nice. Uh, uh, David says, uh, any trouble sending Flory washes to Australia? Thank you for the inspiration. No, we can do that. You have to go via PM Models though. PM Models will send them to you. Uh, Yeah, Richard says he's dying to get on with Comrade Bullerbill. Yeah, you'll be fine. Hopefully you'll be out soon, uh, Richard. The problem we have, I know guys have been talking about getting us a distributor in Australia. It's still the shipping cost of it and getting it out there at the moment. It's horrendous. Uh, Alex says he's doing the Tamiya 48 scale F-16 in the half glass scheme. Oh, no, well. That's what mine is in. I did the uh, 30 second one in half class. Uh, uh, yeah, Richard said he should be out walking around in December. Crikey. Oh, uh, a proper job then. Yeah, that's oh. it. Don't do things by halves. Uh, 50 cows doing the Airfix 72nd Helldiver. Cool. Uh, Lee's working on the 72nd uh, Beaufort, the Airfix one. Uh, 848 one. And it's now. putting up a Beaufight. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes. That'll be interesting, and I need not that for Hmm. I'm glad when this chassis is done because I seem to keep knocking parts off it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Yeah, especially them plumbing things on the back. Can you see that? Look, them. Yeah, those. Yeah, I did that oh. as well. I, I cracked one off and then it was just, yeah, oh. on one side. So I ended up having to, I put a dab of super glue and then just tacked it back in. Are you on photo etch or just styrene? No, mine were just plastic. Oh, right, because he's a photo etch. Oh, no, mine were plastic. There's not a lot of location points on it. No. Oh. Oh. Ooh, drying off nicely on there. Oh, there's um, one. Look. What else have we got? Mm, looking good. So I did my door cards uh, did a very dark grey. All oh, right. I thought they were green. No, I did mine dark grey. Only because when I was looking around, I found a picture of one in Uganda. Yeah. And he's, he stood next to it with the door open and the door card dark grey. And I was like, I've done mine green as well because I just literally yeah. did it like the rest of it. What? Well, this bit? Yeah, the actual bit in there, yeah, and it was oh, dark oh, grey. That's, that's the door grey, isn't it? You're yeah, the this. door card itself. Yeah. Yeah, it was like dark grey. Oh, right, okay. Hmm. There you go, you Matt. Got... Somebody's done the ICM 72nd one, look. Yeah, I just was looking at that, yeah. Oh, Chris has done it. 
Very nice, Krista. Very, very nice. I've got to say, this attack is lovely. <laughs> hey? This attack is lovely. This is, yeah. So, yeah, there's my door card. Hold on. Like that. I'm on chat, hold on. Oh, right. Hold on, let's have a look. All right, yeah. The only thing I kept knocking off, and I have done since I finished it, is you've got the little U-shaped step underneath the um, yeah. fuel tank and the other one on the other side. And it's like, yeah, well, those have gone. <laughs> yeah. It's quite a complex kit, aren't they? Nightmare. It. There's a few bits you can, um, like say, mm. knock off, basically, if you keep handling it. Yeah, that's the trouble. Every time you pick it up, something comes off in your hand. Yeah. So... I must admit, I managed to snap a wheel off the other day. Did you? <laughs> yeah. So, so what's that? Super glue him back in. <laughs> Wait, how did you manage to snap a wheel off it? Oh, well, I picked it up and obviously I just tweaked it to one side and it bent down and then I tried to bend it back and that didn't work because then it fell off. <laughs> hmm. uh, somebody was asking about a, um, a ro recommendation for roller or thing to roll photo etch. Um, well, a, what was cutting, Matt? <laughs> oh, I was going to say a um, set of paintbrushes and all. Yeah, or I have got in here a couple of bits of acrylic rod. Acrylic rod? Yeah. Mm. Somewhere. What have I done what with it? Hey. I, I was going to say just get different bits. Of... I seem to have lost me acrylic rod. I did have a couple of bits of acrylic rod, different sizes of it. Yeah, there's that. Work well. That yeah. worked well, but if you get brass, brass tubing, yeah, yeah. Then, I mean, you can use it for a couple of different things, don't you? That's it. He's lost Bill now. He's rummaging in his toolbox. That's it. He's rummaging in his scratch building bit. But yeah, so as I say, you've got loads of little options on this, but one of the quickest and easiest, if you've got a mouse mat. And then, let me just grab up something off. Yeah, yeah, put yourself on full cam. You're going to do a demo. Quick demo. So, yeah. let's say, if you want to use paint brushes, what you can do, if I do it in the white bit, you can see it. Yeah. You can Are just you pop not? it down there, and then obviously you can just get this, and you can roll. I do Are one end. And then kneel it first. Oh, you could do, yeah. You heat it up and do it, but you can do it like just like this. Trouble with the kneeling, I would bloody use my flamethrower thing and it just disappears. It, just it vaporizes because <laughs> I get a bit carried away. I so you can use that. And obviously the different sizes, if you use a bigger brush handle, you get a, a gentler curl. <laughs> That's it. A brush, bigger brush handle. A bigger brush handle, obviously you get a gentler curl with it. And then if yeah. you use something really small, what have I just done with it? Is that it in the end? Oh, I lost it. Seriously, what did I just do with that? Here it is. Right, if you get a small, you know, got a little bit of a steel roll here, you can pop that in, and then obviously you can. So this is the Flory Models mouse mat you use it? Yes, obviously any other mouse mat won't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <obviously. laughs> but no, any mouse mat, so you can use these for rolling and things like that, because obviously it's got enough give in here, you can do it, and as you see, it keeps it, it doesn't go too far wonky and stuff like that but you can do various ones and you can roll them in tighter and various things but as i say i just like having the control you can buy proper rollers for it but uh yeah mm. and you can get pretty much anything Ooh. James has got a question for you while you're doing that, Phil. Mm -hmm. The side colours of a Vietnam Sky Raider, I think it's the Air Force one. Oh, God. That would just be the standard Southeast Asia colours, wouldn't it? Oh, 
But the Navy ones were white, and he's saying that Trumpet, uh, this is Trumpeter, by the way, so take it with a pinch of salt, because the underside colour, the camo version in my research is light gold grey. It's not, there's a proper colour, isn't there? Yeah, it's basically like insignia white um, for the Air Force One. Yeah. The thing is, you can get away with just using an off white, which is very similar to how I did the bottom of the Vulcan, which literally was. But you can buy insignia white, which is. Uh, it's like a creamy colour underside. Hold on, I will tell you the technical terms for it. If you can bear with back. me. Let me check my Bible. <laughs> and uh, where are we? Do, 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 do. Uh, so, where's the whitey colours? Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, best number on it. Yeah, that's what I'm just looking at. I always thought it was a light grey. It, yeah, it's a. It depends which Air Force one you're doing. If you're doing the very the early ones, you can do. It. Oh look, Chris has got green door cards on his now. But it depends which version you're doing and how old it is, because uh, mine doesn't have that thing on the side that box above the fuel tank this is proper rabbit hole this isn't it oh dark God, out. that's it now and to be honest mine doesn't have two door handles like that either which one what Chris has put up some pictures but you can't tell which truck that is well mine's that that them doors look so I think I'm with Krista because I think that's an oh. early one hold on yeah, perhaps yours is an early one. Mine's a later mine, one. Mine is an, an early, I think. It says on the box somewhere. Yeah, because there is two versions and uh, look there. Mine's just the... I think it's an early one anyway. I haven't got two. You found an FS number yet for this colour? FS36, yeah, camouflage grey. Yeah, 3622. Yeah, attacker do it and real colours do it. Because we've got both. Yes. There's the real colour one, so that's three two five four. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And it's zero uh, C zero thirty nine camouflage grey in um attacker. Nice. So obviously that'll be Cross reference throughout the arranger of the thought for the red top and blue top and whatever you use. So, well, that's the lacquer one. Yeah. There you go. I always thought it was a light grey, mm. like a whitey. Yeah, it's a very pale grey. Very, very pale. They look mm. like a creamy, yeah. the warm grey, isn't it? Shall yeah. we say? Uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Order incoming. Thanks, James. Uh, Lindsay says, "Will the Flory mugs be making a comeback?" Uh, yes, they will. Obviously, it'll be a, a. We do them every year as a, a limited job, so they will come out. Uh, I'll do the pre-order in November, like we normally do, so I get an idea of how many people want them, and then uh, I'll put the order in and everything. Usually, the first week in. December so we have them so you always have them time for Christmas so this will be the the latest limited edition one so obviously this was last year's which is in the red with the flory wash this year it'll be Alex uh, that's that one that's the year before which was with the black so this year it will be Alex on it so that'll be the Sander one the Sander girl and that'll be the 2022 limited edition mug and as I say, I, you probably I'll do the badges and the little stickers again if I can get them ordered in time. Or hopefully the company's even still available. <laughs> Dad. 
David, I didn't just use that for product placement. I used it for scale as well. Like Nathan's <laughs> Spitfire, because he had his hand in it, I used it for scale. Although well, it was quite good to put it actually on a floor remodel sander. <laughs> that was subliminal marketing, really. It was. I wouldn't blatantly be that obvious. Oh, that's on me. <laughs> no, it <laughs> would. <laughs> right, is this dry yet? Ooh, almost. Is it only area aircraft stands have taken a bit more work than I thought they would? Mm -hmm. Right, just put a bit of air on this. This is just fresh air. Well, it's having compressed, so I don't think you'd call it fresh, but just to speed this up. using a hairdryer to speed up drying your wash only because what can happen is you can actually soften the paint and then obviously at our next stage when we're scrubbing all of this off you end up physically um, you know grinding it into the surface so it won't come off so what we'll do I'll just go full screen a minute gang yeah. so usual thing it's clay so what you're going to be doing is either wiping it just clean off over a glossy surface. If it's over more of a textured surface, you might need a bit of water to rehydrate the clay and then make it release. So just think of it like being sat on your car. It's that thing, you know, you come along with a pressure washer. It comes away quite quickly and easily. But, but you can see this is a nice glossy surface. So it is literally just going to come off with really no moisture needed because it's over a nice glossy finish. So if I just go on the closer camera, you can see, you can see now it's all just in the panel lines and it's rubbing away off of anywhere. So you can do it just like this, but I'd still recommend wetting your cloth a little bit because if you just pushing it around, it just takes it away. Yeah, if you actually then come in with a, uh, a little bit of moisture, it will grind it back into anywhere you may have missed. So I just lick it back of the hand, not most of it off because this will come away really easy anyway. And then what you can do is you can start to polish it and buff it up and just be left with everywhere in the panel lines. So as you can see, it's just getting caught in all the panel lines and all the details. And again, we'll just go over here. And this has been done basically just as a, a pin wash. If you watch when we do the Vulcan, the Vulcan's gonna go over a satin finish to give it a bit of grime. So I don't want it looking that clean. But with this one, we want it to be quite clean because we're going to post shade it. And literally, we just go along and wipe it off. on wash off mm. and again like I always say do around your framing and your clear parts as well um, because the great thing is about it it'll go around in the seals and all of that and it makes it look a little bit more natural when it's all together 
Well, there we go. She's looking pretty much just down in here. And the camera sort of hates it a bit. But just in something like this, it's just going to make all the panel lines pop. And again, you can get where we put some in the real wells, give it a bit of a thing all over and again on here because it's you know on a glossy surface it just comes off it comes off really very very easy so but obviously when you've got decals on it's better to protect them so like on here we got lots of decals so what I didn't want to do was basically run the risk of the wash getting underneath the decal or just lifting it off. So by sealing, putting a clear gloss coat right over this, although we've lost a little bit of the metal luster, which is the trade-off, you've guaranteed that the decals will be stuck in place because otherwise you can be in a situation where they just, you know, give up and they'll release, the wash gets underneath it, you've got it caught under the carrier film, all the usual bits and pieces, and it just doesn't look nice. A little bit of wet wash under here. What did you seal that with? Um, that was done with uh, the old uh, Hitaka gloss coat. All right, because it don't seem to have lost any. No, it's still got it. It's lost a little bit. I will be honest. It doesn't look quite as uh, as it did, but it's kept it. I think better than other ones I've used. I was about to say it's on camera. It looks mm. pretty good, to be honest. It looks mm. metallic to me. Yeah. So once you've got most of it off, all like this then what you can do, if you grab a cotton bud, you can just get in these areas like these little wing roots and you can get right into the 90 degree bits. And if you tease a little bit out so you get a little bit of a wedge shape, you can get just down to these corners. Same under here. Squeaky, squeaky. When you know it's working. Yeah, I can hear the road works. Hopefully we'll be off air before they do it, but we're having a new road <laughs> laid out the front. And uh, oh. I just forgot they're doing it today. So luckily they started up the other end of the road. So what they're doing today, the paths? Yeah, they're doing all the paths and the driveways, you know, that are actually down onto it. Yeah. For people who don't know, I'm, I'm on a private road, so you have to pay for it. It's not like the council pick up the bill. So it's all the residents have come together in unity. I would say that, apart from the few who have refused to pay. <laughs> not that we're bitter. <laughs> I did say about, can we have road markings outside their ass saying it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no at least it's being done because it was getting very bad out there if you had a nice car you couldn't come up the road and as matt will testify his car used to belly off coming off of our drive because there's yeah, a hole i didn't like it no but they're doing it so but anyway i forgot and they still was like oh they're starting tomorrow I was like, are they oh great so we have visions of them being outside the front digging it all up Right, there we go. Ta-da! I say the camera doesn't really like it that much, but what you do, once you've done everywhere, like I always say, if you take a clean cloth, to be honest, this doesn't really affect it. I'll move it out a bit, you can see a bit better. Um, but once you've taken all the wash off, so it's just now in the panel lines, just give it another rub in the direction of the airflow. So if you have got any little bits, it will drag it and make it look like just normal wind marks and stuff. But at the end of it, I always just literally last pass, pop around it, direction of airflow, just to make it, you know, look a bit better. But you can probably see it up there on that tail. Again, camera's a bit tricky on this, but put me behind behind and get a bit of contrast. You see it's got it in the tail. It's all in the metally bits, all in the panel lines now, and away you go. So it's really nice and straightforward with it. So yes, although I have got some glue, this this bit here is actually glue in here. 
where it's obviously off of the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of enamel thinners and a cotton bud and we're just going to give it a rub. But obviously we don't want to go too far because obviously we've got extra acrylics on here and they're enamel as well. So there we go. Hopefully it's just going to lift them off before it eats through. There we go. That's off. Better. Nice. nice. Get into that. It is. It's a real nice shame that they it's not out at the moment, is it? Um, I think the only version that's out is like the start of one, which mm. is the green F2, is it, Nave? Yeah, the F2 mm. um, with the green camo. It's the same kit as that. Yeah, it's the same kit. It's a starter kit. It is really, really nice. It goes together very, very nicely. It's not, not like they didn't have to mop, you know, the back of so. My gut feeling is a Lightning will be back in the catalogue for next year because it seems to have a year on, year off, that kit. Yeah. Well, it's such a iconic yeah. for, for us Brits hmm. I just wonder if we'll do the small belly early lightning at some point uh oh super glue open so there we go that's it with the wash uh, obviously if you wanted to you could now overcoat it so if you wanted to come in, you can go right over it and put any coat you want over it. So it doesn't matter if it's lacquers or it doesn't matter if it's like enamels or acrylics. It's absolutely safe. Once the wash is on and dry, it's actually quite difficult to move it. It needs to be sort of rehydrated. So uh, unless it's on a really slippery coat, but because this is now in all the panel lines, it'll be safe. You can even hand paint over the top. But like I said before, do the old trick of like one and done. You don't want to be going multiple times over the same area so if you're on top of the wing here you know if you have got your clear coat and you're brushing on just a couple of passes and you're done but what happened is if you keep going back and forth over it obviously you've rehydrated it and that clay at some point will release and then you're going to get streaks of it where it starts to come away but as I say if you're just one and done and you're in or out you'd be absolutely fine with it but there we go that's those all done and yeah you're right it doesn't actually look too bad <laughs> it looks good I think it really hmm. you know yeah still looks metallic to be honest this like... is the first time i've ever used that particular clear coat over um extreme metals it's only because i'm literally out of my usual ones so but yeah no, it's come out right, really. attacker gloss clear yeah works on your mm. metallic finishes yes it's good mm. Mm. nice good job Happy with that. Get rid of that bits. Okay, right, we've done that as well. Okay, how are we doing in questions? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, guys are chatting amongst themselves in there. Uh, uh, no, it's not sat in a puddle of thinners. It's fine. It's nice and glossy. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine uh right okay so uh do, 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 do. where are we let me go back a little bit oh i know what i've got a bit of a conversation we could have go on uh -huh. i probably know the answer for you phil but i think you have and i don't know about you nathan but you know when you've because um, because obviously here i'm getting quite a few built kits mm -hmm. um, hold on let me put the other cam back on um and my question is to you you two is do you get emotionally attached to any of your builds because to me i was thinking about this last night while i was watching tv hmm. and i don't no i don't hmm. i don't think i'll just i'm just looking around if there's any that i think i'd be gutted if something happened to it do you know what i mean or yeah it got binned or somebody broke it and stuff and do you know what i don't honestly think there is no mm. as i say my answer is no as long as i've done the final reveal photos whatever happens after that i'm not worried about but obviously when you're putting the time and commitment into doing like a video yeah. build if it got destroyed halfway through the video build i'll be mortified because it means i've got to start again and i have done yeah, that that's... in the past so 
you know, you're sort of going over old ground again, but you know, I am attached to a few, obviously my Star Destroyer being one, my Hinder like, and obviously my Intruder. It is that thing, isn't it? In a fire, what would you grab? <laughs> you know, but like I've always said, my point is, is that the great thing about this hobby, it's a bit like Lego, you know, if you smash mm. your Lego model, you can put it back together and mm. you could build another model. Your children, it's a little bit more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it is that thing. At the end of the day, it is just plastic and you could you redo know, it. But the, the thought process came, because you know when you go to model shows and it's like the please do not touch bit yeah. and all, you know why they put that on? Mm. I have to say yeah. that annoys me a little bit. I, I, it does irritate me yeah. a little bit. Because it's kind of stating the obvious. Now, you know, I mean, we've had it, didn't we, Nathan, where we was at the Nantwich show a few years ago and that little lad came, mm -hmm. born, mm -hmm. and picked something up and, oh, you know, mm -hmm. and she was, she was more, you know, she did like sort of tell him off and stuff like that. But, yeah. you know, we were just, well, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I say, got some super glue and, mm -hmm. you know, he was just interested. And you know what, like, how old would you say he was, Nate? Six, six or so. You know, you're and to 26. me, that's like, he's, in, he's interested in something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And naturally, for a six or seven year old, mm -hmm. it's, it's the touchy feely bit as well, isn't it? Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. So that's why it's like, well, there's no point getting upset and, and angry about it, shall we say, because he's just curious. It's yeah. just, you know, it's, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, it's just like I say, you know, if. Uh, you know, like emotional attachment. And I think we should ch chuck it to chat as well, do you know? Mm. Yeah. I think you've always got your favourite build. But you is, say, I, always, I always think, though, people are more worried about touching somebody else's model, you know? I think yes. People, I think, are more... Like, if people touch my models, I don't have a problem with that. I trust them not to drop it or not to break it, yes. you know? Yes. But I think a lot of people, like I've said, oh, grab mine, even with us. We're like, oh, grab us me whatever. And everyone's like, sod that, you can touch it. I'm not picking that up. It'll look like it'll break, you know? But yeah. again, you'll get, like, Rob was always quite good. Rob will grab anybody's model because he was yeah. good at fixing them as well. But, yeah, well, you know, that was always the thing. It was, you know, I think people are more worried about touching other people's models than, you know, they are the other way around. You know, if somebody grabbed my model, it, it wouldn't bother me. And I've had people but, before have a look and, you know. Hey, but is that they're afraid of the reaction they're going to get from mm. said person yeah or actually or physically knocking something off yes you know um because obviously we all know each other so it's, it's irrelevant to us in general but yeah i mean i wouldn't go obviously go to a display table and then go pick somebody's kit up you just yeah. wouldn't do it as the etiquette and the manners is it mm -hmm. but that's right. why i think sometimes the the do not touch ones mm. and all that are a bit over the top. I think that's a lack of respect for the people as well who are viewing. Yes. And I do yeah. wonder if, that's, if that is kind of aimed at the kids. Yeah, the, maybe. Because uh, sometimes you see stands and they have literally plastic shields, barbed wire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, <laughs> like a the bloody fortress. Towers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, laser oh. towers and like sirens and a searchlight. Yeah, when a child comes towards it, you know, everyone's like, mind your stations! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, perhaps it's... it's I think me. that's a... I don't know, but... Again, I it's... Like... Mm. Go on, Nave. I'll, put, I'll switch off this cam for a second. Whoops. I'd prefer it if a model could do a few shows before it, it met its maker. Hmm. Mm. But to be honest, about four months ago, I chucked a load out. Um, I chucked a load of built models out because they'd done the rounds. They were getting a bit long in the tooth. Mm. So I've binned them just to create some space, to be honest. Mm. Well, that's they've done. They've done a few shows. They, they've done their job because I'm going to end up with nowhere to put them. Mm. But I think people that have a model broken there's a lot worse things that could happen to you <laughs> like yeah. Dave says he was there obviously when pixie dropped my which well, didn't drop she called it on her cardigan uh, yeah. my flanker when we did the cosford show 
yeah. and she was absolutely mortified and it, it, to me it's like it's a plastic model i'm not worried about it it's fine you know yeah you, yeah just to be honest it. i enjoyed winding her up more about it that's, than the that's, actual yeah. you know got more mileage out of her accidentally breaking the kit than what you would have done if it was fine because yeah. all it had done was a gathered dust and eventually fell apart and died but it was funny you know to wind her up and all the rest of it with it and to see everybody else's reactions you mm. know but to me in some ways i would rather it got broken and destroyed like that than just literally sit in the cabinet until the part where it starts to disintegrate you know just gathers <laughs> dust and you end up throwing it out at least it went off with a good death you know like we said before so you know but yeah, I think, you know, from my point of view, like I've always said, if I'm working on a build at the moment, you know, it, it's one of those things I'm quite protective over them. But as soon as yeah. the reveal photos are done and I've done my spill to camera at the end of it and all the rest of it, whatever happens to it after that is fine. And like, you know, again, I've given away, we've done charity auctions for a lot of my builds. But in my early career, obviously, when I did nothing but commission work, that was the other side round because then I would build a model and actually I'd be like, yeah, I wish I could keep it, you know, but technically it's not even my model anymore. It's, you know, the commissioner's model. He's, he's paid me to build it and all the rest of it. And in some times I, I must admit, and I spoke to Matt about it yesterday. I did a Hasegawa JU 32nd, the JU 87 Stuka, mm -hmm. the tank buster one. And it turned out yeah. absolutely brilliant. And that was a commission. And it, the kit had only been out a couple of weeks as well. And it went and it was like, I was quite sad about that because it was actually a really nice big one and all the rest of it. And it's one of those that was like, I wish I had kept that. It would have been a nice one to have. Uh, but generally, because they just would come and go, my only downside was that if people would ever come in and come round and have a chat and all the rest of it, they go, oh, where's your models? And it's like, I don't own one. Because every single one comes in here and it goes out. What you see on the bench, unless they happen to be here before it's being packed up, would normally be not looking good you know so you're waiting for somebody to come along who's actually you know at that stage but very rare that would happen i think it's just yeah, it's it's yeah. an interesting concept because i mean the thought with like what nathan said about binning some hmm. i'm in the same boat here with some of my older built kits as well because obviously room you know they're in boxes up on the mezzanine above my head hmm. and some of them are knocking on and some of them are in bits and just hmm. i've got better as well yeah. So, you know, I might a photographic evidence of a, like, I think we should do at some point is a progress from where we started or came back to the hobby to where we are now mm. as a team. Yeah. We've all, we've, you know, you, you, we've all progressed. Oh, God, yeah, absolutely. Even yourself still, ain't you? Even yeah, you uh, yeah. best. Yeah, I've shown That'd a lot nice. of my stuff, my really dodgy early stuff at various shows. And yeah. it's like, they're awful, you know? But again, I think it's just, it's one of those things, isn't it? Where certainly at a model show, we spoke about this before, some kits do the round so much, they deserve a Viking burial anyway. You know, you can see yeah. where the yellows are, the whites are more yellow than white nowadays. And, you know, yeah. sometimes you often think, bless it, it needs, to, it needs an accident, that one. But, you know, again, <laughs> there's not a lot you can do about it. You know, people yeah. want to take their models and show them year after year. I think there should be a ruling where it's only allowed to be out for three years. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's not a bad one. Or yeah, absolutely. Um, just an interesting yeah. concept, I think, isn't it? Because, like you say, we have got a lot between us, haven't we? Yes, and that's it. But again, like with mine, I, you know, when people have said to me, "What are you doing with your whatever?" And it's like, would you want it? You can have it, you know, because to me it's done and it's only going to, and I'd rather them go to a good home. So we've <laughs> donated many of them now to the REF and various things. We have one guy, his daughter was flying in the airliner that I did uh, for Tui. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, if you want it, you can have it because he wanted to buy it. And it was like, you can have it if you want it. I would rather it go to a good home. So, yeah. you know, uh, and that's what happens. So some of them I would probably keep for a while. But other ones, like to be honest, the Iwo Jima, I don't even know how to clean it. It's a bit of a dust magnet. Mm. It's a big ship that's stuck down in there. And it's like, what, you know, you know, it's it's a bit sort of tricky with that one. And like, as you guys know, you've been upstairs where all the Star Wars collection is and all the rest of it. I was looking at it the other day thinking, 
really ought to dust some of this stuff up here you know no. it's a bit it's all dust magnets up there so yeah i've got it with the cabinets at the front near the door i did actually oh. dust i did dust not long ago and now it's just thick on the top it's just yeah hmm. that's that's the other problem isn't it maintenance of them it's not so bad in here obviously it's a bit more of a closed space hmm. but when they're outside i mean i'll put the tops pretty clear actually they're pretty dust free there is a skim layer, but obviously yeah. being there, it's it's not as bad. Um, but obviously, when you come up, you're going to text them away anyway. Probably yeah. get some of Kev's dioramas back to him as well. Yeah, and um, and then collapse it because up there is going to be needed for space and racking. I think so. Hmm. Yeah. I think the consensus on the forum is pretty similar. Yeah, that's it. Kids of a certain age seem to go. I do think once you've had them five or six years, they've done the... Yeah, they've had their life. They've done the rounds, haven't they? Like, I think we feel, obviously, with the Star Destroyer, that's just such a rear kit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and expensive, so I can see his point with that. And, you know, a couple yeah. of the other ones. But, yeah, you, you know. I mean, Phil builds them for a reason, for obviously videoing, for doing video builds, so. I think if, I'd hate, I wouldn't like my A400 to go, because there's no way I'm building another one of them. Yeah, and I agree. My wall here with them on, there's no mm. way I'm ever building any of them ever again. So I probably wouldn't let go of those types of ones. And that's probably why I'm somewhat attached to the hind the A6, the bigger 30 second scale ones, I would probably keep purely because like we said, it's one of those ones where you, it's a once in a lifetime build, you know, yeah. but 48 scale and 70 second scale stuff, like, you know, the ones I've got in there that I'm just looking at, like I've got um, the Airfix Hurricane, I'd quite happily build that again. Uh, you know, the little Buccaneer as well, the 70 second one, I've got that one in there, I'd build that again. So if those was mm. to go, you know, Hornets, let's face it, I've built lots of them, I'm planning on doing another one in the future. Tomcats, things like 48 scale again, but like the 30 second scale Tomcat that I've got over there, I wouldn't do that one again in a hurry. So I'll be less likely to give them up than the smaller stuff, definitely. Mm. Peter says there, it's a good idea, Phil. You could have an IPMS expiry date of three years. <laughs> so if you show it, you're only allowed to show it for three years. <laughs> Dirk says about um, instead why uh, don't you just revamp them uh, instead of just chucking them? I've done that before, and that's what happened to Buster. Although he never actually got physically rebuilt, but other ones I have done. So you just strip them back to nothing and start painting and that. But the whole point is, is that you know, from a build point of view, I'm quite into the construction. You know, I like the building of it, just not repainting and re, you know, get some extra decals for it and redoing them again. But, you know, it's something we have covered about dismantling a model, stripping it back, and then obviously repriming, putting it back together again. Yeah, I've done one. I've done a, a Tamiya half track I built on one of my holidays a, a while, a long time ago, and I was never happy with it. And I redid it because it's when the first time I was trying the real colours mm -hmm. before we stuck them, just to see what they were like. And to be honest, you know, yeah, there's, I think there's a couple of armour kits that might revamp, mm. you know. But probably some of the aircraft I think I'll get rid of, to be honest. I think they'll be going to the bin, hmm. winning the skip. Yes. So, no. Yeah. I, th I think sometimes it, it's quite liberating to not destroy, because obviously that's the wrong word, but to start a clean, fresh, you know, like from my point of view, for years and years and years, I always wanted some models around, you know, to have a display cabinet with you working. Cause that used to be my biggest bugbear. You'd have family or friends or whatever come over and they always mm. like, oh, what you're working on the rest of it. Oh, have you got nothing built? And you're like, no. Now I've got built cabinets full of it. It's now the other way. It actually annoys me. But then you've got that thing of saying, well, if I have a cull, what am I going to get rid of? But what would be really nice is to have an empty display cabinet. Cause you know then, oh, I've got, I can put, I could build that and put that in the cabinet. You know, yeah. there is that thing, like I said, for years and years been going on about it. I did say when I retire, I'm going to have my little museum of models and I would start with like World War One 
you know the top say six aircraft three from each nation or whatever same with world war ii so obviously you'd have a, a spitfire a 109 you'd have like a, a mustang a p47 a ju87 things like that as well and then obviously korean war mig 15 and that and work your way through you know the sort of the decades of aviation in model form i quite fancy doing that uh pick a, a scale probably 48 scale for me uh, and you work through them and then have a, a display that tells a story you know almost instead mm. of it like at the moment my display cabinets are just what i can fit in it so that it's complete hodgepodge of everything that's in there so i've got like mig 23 up against uh you know a halifax bomber uh, in there because it's the way i can shoehorn them around uh, to get them to fit but there's no right or wrong to anything that's in there but it would be nice to sort of have it in a situation where you've almost got start at one side world war one world war two sort of you know into wars you know things like that and then obviously you know korean vietnam and then obviously working up to other conflicts right the way through of how progression of aviation has gone through and obviously you could do the same with armor you know world war one tanks world war two you know and then obviously you've yeah, got yeah, your yeah. koreans and your vietnams and more modern yeah. stuff you know yeah. right the way through i think that'd be quite an interesting one at least when you're looking at it on display it's doing something you know it's telling a story so yeah i think that's probably why i'm drawn to the figures in dioramas i think you know like kev does the dioramas because they tell a little story don't they yeah. i think you know, rather than just sitting there as an object mm -hmm yeah you know, especially like the human side of it like i've said before with the figures it just mm. something to relate to i suppose i don't know but mm. yeah i do like the old concept of that to be honest the woodhouse goth says he says since lockdown mm. and returning to the hobby he's built 42 models uh, Gee, wow. so far uh, and don't have an emotional connection with them uh, but I have a few kits uh, I like over the others due to the nice uh, the build experience, which is good. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it as well. Building experience has got to be up there, hasn't it? As well, you know. Definitely, but I think you, know, you actually board. make a really fair point there because again, I haven't actually thought of it about that. But honestly, that's probably why I've got quite a good attachment to the bear, uh, mm. to that TU95 because it's a crap kit. But it came out mm. really nice and I really enjoyed the challenge of doing it. And again, like what we did with the Intruder, I've always been a fan of the Intruder. I've wanted a 30 second Intruder for ages, uh, but doing it the way I did it with mine, having the, the Coke can stands on it uh, and stuff like that. And again, it's just, it's one of those ones where it worked really well and I was very happy of how it came out. So you do have that attachment to it. And I suppose that's probably right. So you know, stuff that's sort of just shake and bake, you don't have that much of an attachment like the B-52 because that was going really wrong halfway through the build with being stressed skin. <laughs> it was getting to the point where if this keeps going this way, I'm going to have to buy another one to do the fuselage again because I'm running out of yeah. plastic. And uh, so anyway, now, yeah, got a real, you know, it came out really nice and I do like it. Mm. So good stuff. One second, I'm just going to look out my window to see what they're doing. It's all right. <laughs> Paul, Paul's got a question that me and Nate could probably answer anyway. Uh, recommendation for Battle of Britain aircraft in 148 scale to match the new Lancaster. If you want a Spitfire Mark 1, I'd probably do the Eddard one. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. But, probably... uh, if you're talking RAF here and not obviously uh, Luftwaffe stuff, Hurricane Mark 1, probably the Airfix one. Yeah. Up to second thing, the Italiary one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, so what else is there? You could. Oh, you, yeah. There's well, Ari, the Defiant. Blenheim. Blenheim. So these are Airfix. Yeah. Definitely Airfix again. Uh, what else was there? I'm trying to think. Not but, a lot for the RAF. It was mainly just Hurricanes and Spitfires, really, wasn't it? Mm. Definitely the Eddard new Mark 1 spit I'd go for, and like I say, the uh, Airfix Hurricane. Yeah, which is what I've got done there. Yeah. Probably, if you want that, I'd grab that soon because I've got a feeling that's going to go again. Mm. So yeah. that was last year, wasn't it, for the, for the thing. And then if you're talking Luftwaffe, blimey, what's your choice? ICM 88s and mm. 111s mm. and Stukas, you've got Airfix Stukas. Uh, 109s, 
early in 109s, take your pick. Mm -hmm. The yeah. X one's nice, the Ed Old one's not too bad. Uh, I'm trying to think who else does the 109, because everybody does Gs in that, don't they, really? Mm. Tamiya do the 109 for the Battle of Britain. What, the early one? Yeah, yeah they do, they do them all. the E3 oh, and E4. It's the E, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 And That's again, an easy build. The, F, mm. the Eddard one's the nicest one, but it's more involved. It depends what you... Yeah, what plenty level of options, isn't it? Because obviously, uh, Tammy do a Mark 1 spit, don't they? Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's got an Apex do a Mark 1 spit, which isn't bad. The, the, all three are pretty good. Mm. One tens, one tens. you've really got to be looking at the, the uh, Eddard one, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Yeah, 17's ICM, because they're about the only ones that do early... Early ones, so yeah. It's more high and cool 111s than Luftwaffe there. Walrus and Stranra. If you won't get Stranra in 48, Walrus is obviously, if you want to do that, is uh, Airfix again. Mm -hmm. Airfix is going to cover a lot of bases for Battle of Britain. Aren't I was they? going to say, that's basically, yeah. they're playing to the home market, they're getting it well covered, aren't they? Just a bit. Uh, but I can <laughs> definitely get, like we were talking about there, they're saying about the. Um, Airfix uh, Hurricane, I built that one. That's a really nice kit, actually. I really do like it. And you were saying, yeah. until the Armour Hobbies one comes out, but that's gone very quiet. Has everyone noticed? No one's making a noise about that kit. It was all spoken yeah, about and got all pushed and everything, and now it's gone very quiet about that. I think the thing is, though, that's not a Battle of Britain Hurricane, is it? It's a late one. Yeah, they're doing the Mark Two C, isn't it? Yeah, so obviously you want a Mark One, which is yeah. Airfix. Pretty much Airfix in Italy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, uh, I don't think mozzies were around then, Rob. No, mozzies were later, yeah. I mean, you're in, uh, yeah, I think he wants, obviously, a Spitfire, from what I can gather from the question, to go with his Lancaster, he wants a Spitfire and a, mm -hmm. and a Hurricane, doesn't he? Yeah. For the, of the Battle of Britain Memorial, I think, is what he's on about. But, mm. uh, you know, yeah. Hmm. That's exactly John said. Does he mean for the memorial flight? Because aren't you then on two hurricanes or is it two Spitfires now? Hmm. So it's be air fixed for the hurricane and maybe Eddard or Tamir for the Spitfire then? Yeah. Have a nice <laughs> display though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Christ, don't start the Italian bombers. We'll be on to the French bombers next. <laughs> French bombers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Wellington, so I'll tell you what the world needs is a Warwick. Why? Look that one up. Why? Why does it? Well, because that's what my great uncle flew, wasn't it? So he. No. Uh, it was crap. It was crap. It was an <laughs> absolute awful. coffin. He was killed in it in World War Two. So yeah. the thing, literally, you know, the whole point of having two engines on a plane is normally they can fly with one, unless it's a Warwick, <laughs> and it's unflyable with one engine. So if they ever lost an engine, that they'd have to cut the other one off as well. God. Not not what you want, is it? No. Not British not. engineering's finest hour then. Mm. Not very health and safety. No. And... So what have got left to do on the lightning, just your undercarriage? Yes, I'm just gonna do my centre to the wheels. We're alright, they're about five doors up now, ripping up the pavement as they're working their way towards us. So I reckon by the time we've uh, come off air, we should be about right. <laughs> about twenty minutes and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Oh, I like a proper faff around this morning. I'm right, so what close. I'm gonna do is my wheels. My wheels. So if you, I'll do it exactly the same way as we did these, which is a nice little simple trick and a two second one, which I wish I knew about 10 years ago. Because before I always used to do paint the wheels silver, the hub, and then I'd go around with a brush and do the black. Um, yeah. But now clearly I do it the other way of just using a mask. I just put it over the top and spray it and away you go. So I'll just load up some paint and I'll be back over here. Tell you what, I've hurt my finger, my index finger on the outside, and I swear it's from opening paint. Yeah, you got strain. I have, literally, I've got real problem there. So normally you grab old paint, <laughs> don't you, and you twist it, and I get a massive pain right up my hand. So now I have to yeah, use my other finger running out, and I'm thinking at this rate, I'm gonna have, you know, I'll have to be disabled. I'll be at the Paralympics, because I've hurt my hand. 
through modelling. <laughs> so I think that's, that's a, a bit strain bit. injury. Yeah, that's it. Might have to have a couple of months off. Might have to have it amputated. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'll right, start using my feet. <laughs> Be like my left foot. I might get a good following on YouTube then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it now. I'll tell you what, the fit on this armor hobby kit is spot on. It's holding itself together. Mm. That's the other one. Yeah, they're very good, aren't they? Yeah, it's literally just clicked in and that's it. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Let's have a look at that there. I wanted to use magnets so I could put them, put it on the base without. But I think what I'm going to have to do is have a teeny tiny hole hmm. just there. The magnet thing didn't work. Okay, so we just put the template over the top of the wheel, hold down and spray. Simples. Simples. See, I wish I'd known this about 10 years ago. <laughs> One of those things where you've spent years trying to do it, you know, capillary action stuff around and everything, and you're like, ah. Yeah. My little car's getting on. I'm getting shock absorbers fitted to my Fiat today. What time got to pick it up? They close at four. Yeah. I thought I'd have had a phone call by now. Perhaps he's struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to a three-wheeled Fiat 500. <laughs> what shocks are doing front? Yeah. I said, did you notice any change in the ride? And then I said, it's a Fiat 500. It's got horrible. Right. Surprised the MOT didn't pick it up. Suddenly when I had the tyre tires done, it was like, you know. <laughs> proper, 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 proper gone. They're just leaking. Oh, right, okay. It's like, might as well get them done. They've done seven years. I can't. It's not too bad, is it? Yeah. Hey, I'm all posh this year. When my car goes in for service, I get a loan car. Are we going to take bets on what it's going to be? It'll be one <laughs> car slightly better than the one you've got now, so you don't want to give it back. <laughs> is that what they do, is it? They can do if they want to sort of just sow a seed in your headlight. <laughs> just give him the really smart one and like. <laughs> You'll want to buy it. You want that one, yeah. Are you uh, going back to Merck? Yes, well, it's because it's I've got like an extended warranty thing going with it, and I pay oh. monthly. So that All still right. runs got till on it. I've got another year left on it. You see, so what it is, it's basically it's all your servicing costs, all your MOTs, all your breakdowns, and everything is all thrown in. Right. What's um, Verstappen done now then? Don't know. What, has he hurt himself again? As P3 begins with no action taken against Verstappen after a red, red flag investigation. What's that about? Yeah, right. To be honest, I haven't seen any of the practice. I saw Seb right. having a bit of trouble with a fire extinguisher. I thought you was a fan of F1. Yeah, well, I've been They've a bit busy. down, haven't they? Lewis Hamilton's car ran out of steam and broke down. Yeah. Has he nerfed it into a wall? <laughs> <laughs> or are you under pain of death that you better not find out what's gone off? Yeah, probably that as well. 
<laughs> she always says, you better not have bloody watched it. I'm like, would I? <laughs> but can we skip forward to lap 34? Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, the funny thing is, we did sit there and watch whilst we were doing Sanders last week. Yeah. It was quite good, actually, because I did loads of packs of Sanders because it was raining, waiting for it to start, yeah. and it never did, clearly, so... Mm -hmm. I'm glad I went out last Sunday. I thought I'll watch the highlights when I get in. Mm. I've been a bit miffed if I'd have stayed in for that. Yeah. Anyhow. <laughs> I'll just do a cloth up so you guys can see. So that's why we're doing our wheels. Nice and straightforward, and by the time it's got a wash in there, look absolutely lovely. And obviously, the other ones with the hubs. So, if you don't do it by masking, trust me, it's so much easier. And then, away, that will just have an enamel wash right over it to pick out all the details a little bit later. So, it's a nice, straightforward way of doing them. Ooh, it's all quiet outside. Do you think they've gone on lunch? <laughs> it's been an hour, they've had enough. Yeah, that's it. A cup of tea. Yeah, tea break. A bit like said Fred. Well, I need, need a little cue shed for me lightning. Jimmy's got COVID. Oh no. So he ain't doing it. It's the blinker, is it? What do we call him? Oh, there you go. So apparently Max undertook, overtook a car whilst the red flag was out.
No, nope, tea breaks over. We're back at work. Apparently, David's been using them display pliers you reviewed. Uh, the mini pliers. Well, these ones. Very good, he's saying. Very nice. Like I said in the review for it, I think if it's uh, if you if you're one of these people who do a lot of photo etch work, I should think they're fantastic because they're very delicate. Got a great little grip on them. You know, a little bite area for folding up stuff. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, the MiG-25 is normally flew with the enormous belly drop tank. Yes. Is that yes, they did? Uh, yes. They say they didn't have much of a range, did they? No, not without it. To be honest, it's a bit like the Lightning. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, I was on about the camo version. Yeah. I thought the whole point of a MiG-25 was it a high altitude interceptor. Well, that was the whole point. If it was running low level, like it showed for that version of it was, you ain't going to get far. It's a bit <laughs> pointless, isn't it? It's a bit of a pointless... Yeah. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't be going very far with that. No. I actually feel like I'm getting somewhere now with this grad at last. Mm -hmm. So once the chassis work's done, I think it's pretty straightforward. Again, putting because yours goes together very similar to mine anyway. So once you get the cab sorted as well, it's pretty straightforward then, or? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I painted the interior of the cab, which again is another bit. I've got the dashboard to finish off and mm. the decal to put on, and uh, a bit of weathering in there. But yeah, it's, uh, it should actually not be too bad to come together. The thing's a bit of a another spare wheel carrier. Yeah, that, the, yeah. the other one, that's a bit of a fiddly thing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what the best one like. I know, I know the trumpeter ones pretty, pretty good. To, to be honest, the Zvezda one wasn't that bad. It uh, yeah. was quite clicky. It would click together and hold. But, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it is a bit of a ball like trying to get it all in there. Thank you. Nathan doing a bit of woodwork. Yeah. Yes, I think he is. He's, hmm? he's got the monitor out and all sorts. <laughs> Just trying to get this. Yeah, you hear the router in a minute. <laughs> make it. I'm just trying to make it so. I can put it on the base and it doesn't doesn't do that. Oh, see, you. oh right, um, yeah. I've got a pin, but because the fuselage is so thin, what I'm going to do is mount a block yeah. on the inside. Yeah. And hopefully it'll stop it flopping around. Where did you get your base from? So the base is the um, one of them. Oh, right. Oh, an Italy base. Mm, yeah. 
bit rustic, to be honest, and I managed to mount the metal under there. And then just, I try, was trying magnets at the top, but that's not going to work, so I just can't put brass pin. Right. I'm going to mount it through an hole there. Yeah. But I want the option to not have it on the base. So that's why I'm not just gluing it on. So wouldn't it carry down, are we? Yeah. Ah, right, okay. I'll tell you what, that idea you've just come up with with that metal and stuff won't be bad for doing the um, DR1. Mm. Would it? It would look nice with the metal on the... It would on a base or something, yeah. If you're doing Luftwaffe ones, you put the iron cross on. Yeah. If you're doing like an ace, put their, yeah. one of their medals on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But I want it sort of. I don't want to have it permanently fixed to the base. No. It's created a bit of work, but hey, it'd be worth it. <laughs> Some super glue on that. Quite clean. They're getting closer. I don't know if you I can hear them. I was going to say, is that the uh, workmen? Is it that noise? It that is, be? yeah. Well, it's where they're digging up all the pavements. You can hear some. But it's getting it closer is. and closer. It's all right. We're down to the last four minutes. Let's see how close <laughs> they can get. Four yeah, minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> the clock is ticking. It'd be nice to have it all done, though, wouldn't it? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. So like I say, don't scrape the sump off the car when you come to visit. Mm -hmm. Not much. Yeah. Okay. So that Nathan's done this before, he's a proper professional. Where I'd wing it and drill and make a cock up of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of those things, I think I've got to do it right. Is that watching a... What, why, because you're on camera? <laughs> no, it's just because if we don't do it right, I'll end up with a yak sort of mounted like that, all a bit wonky. Nose diving into the soil. Yeah. <laughs> Proper job. Proper job. Proper job. I'll tell you what, I'm getting peckish. I am as well. Put it in your peck the clock. Getting a bit peckish. Had scampi chips and mushy peas last night. It's very nice. <laughs> Got leftover pizzas today. Homemade or takeaway? Our neighbour has got a business where he's got a mobile pizza oven. Ooh. Really? Can you send yeah. him? Yeah. Does he come to Doncaster? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he was doing some sort of demo cooking. But why not? Rude not to. What you need to build, Philip? A what, pizza oven. Do you know what? I did say to the other half about that. I think we need a pizza oven. Oh, pizza oven. Mega. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it on a trailer. Yeah? He just sort of sets up in pub car parks or does like weddings and that sort of stuff. And his pizza is lush. Can you imagine proper stone baked, yeah, are stone they? Bake, yeah. yeah, I mean, the thing must be like a nuclear reactor because you can cook a pizza in like seconds. The thing is, that's what they like, though, isn't it? They literally get so hot. Yeah. That's why they always Go burn on the bottom. It takes like a couple of minutes. It takes them longer to build it than it does to cook it. Oh, that's proper fast food, isn't it? <laughs> You're making me proper hungry now. I could eat a pizza. <laughs> See if this works, otherwise, it's a morning's been a wasted adventure. From camp, looking at the floor.
just trying to get this thing onto its gear if we can before we scoot. I don't think it's going to be able to stand up on it. Job done. I'm in a rush to get it some sort of mountain before we finish. Yeah. Time mashing liquor. I bet you've had that, haven't you, Phil? <laughs> Pie and mash or a pot noodle. Like I could say, pie mash and liquor or a pot noodle. Choices, Rob. You are living the dream. <laughs> Some fine dining going on. Fine dining the... before you're off on your jolly holidays. Mm -hmm. Take a food case full of pot noodles with you. <laughs> yeah. Smuggle them in. <clears throat> Can you still take your own tea bags now? Now we're not in the EU. <laughs> Or is that contraband? Yeah, it's contraband now. Yeah. Mm, not quite working here. Right, well, I'll just leave that for a second till we go before I try and stand it on its gear. <clears throat> oh. so. Okay. Oh. Here we go. Look at that. Right, is everybody all okay? Mm. Yeah. Very good. I think it's going to have to be permanently mounted. Is it? <laughs> Flops around. It's worth a try, but yeah, I still do it permanently mounted, I think. It does look a nice kit, though. Mm. It is. Thank you. It'll look nice oh, on the stand right as well with the medal. Very good. Mm. Yeah. And there's wheels up and glued on. Mm -hmm. Get crack on with my comrade Buller Sig later, I reckon, tonight. Be uh, get a bit more done on that. Mm -hmm. Very so, good. Yeah. Cool. Right. Okay, dokie then, guys. Well, look, we, if I just do a quick uh, run round of what we've been up to. So, as I say, wash on and off. We just put the gear in, which we're quite happy about. But as I say, looking very nice. We've got the pylons on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all the pylons on all the bits and pieces on it. And then we'll do some post shading. There's a couple more decals still to go on around the canopy and that. But I can actually unmask the canopy now. So that'll be ready to go. But that's coming together very, very nicely. So we will, moment of truth. We'll see if it's a tail sitter, shall we? <laughs> no, look, we're okay. It's up. It's up. Yay. Let me prove it on camera. Look, it's up. So... <laughs> just about holding there and it's not a tail sitter so uh, look there's nothing underneath when we do the magic trick with a wand yeah <laughs> there's nothing really underneath it holding it up yeah. so that's very good and uh matt how have you got on looking very I've good with your chasses yeah i've been all right so as you can see i've been doing a bit of painting on some color so the fuel tank mm -hmm. a bit of chipping and then obviously the doors and the interior as well. So a bit of wear and tear. So next is a bit of weathering in there and we'll chuck it all together. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Not okay. too bad. Very I forgot, good. like I say, I forgot how good our road attackers are. Yeah, I must admit I was the same. I did the Vulcan. <laughs> Vulcan's done purely in attackers right there. I'll tell you what through. though, I put, I put my chipping fluid on because I'm using the worn effects. Yeah. And um, I used it yesterday, and I used it with Tamiya. Mm -hmm. With lacquer thinner, chip fine, no problem. Yeah. Obviously, I've, today with, with the uh, attacker, with leveling thinner, mm -hmm. and it was quite hard to start, really. I've been chipping with a stick a stick rather than a brush. Yeah. Because it does seem to go pretty hard pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I know there's a window with lacquers, as it is, but that's very short. So, yeah. let's learn. I forgot about that. But actually, the chipping... I'm quite happy with because using the uh, cocktail stick it has you know I just yeah. wanted a bit of air rather than it looked you know completely derelict shall we say so it's worked probably in my favor so yeah mm, very that. good excellent and uh nave so uh, so spent the morning getting the base ready mm -hmm. popped my medal in like you do very nice very like that and then started to uh, a little bit experimental. I might move where I'm putting the pin in. I think I'll probably put it too close to the radiator. But I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Well, you see these Soviet 
memorials, don't you, with MIGs yeah. sticking off. So I might change the shape of the... I don't know, I'm playing around at the moment, but that's the general hmm. idea. Cool. Something like that. You ought to paint it in brass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've sort of... <laughs> <laughs> I've rubbed the, I've rubbed the gloss plastic down. I was thinking maybe brass. I don't know what color the base is going to be. Hmm. I'm, I'm more thinking. I might just plain. mount it. Yeah, I thought we like... meant the plane as well. Just do it in, sort of all over <laughs> brass. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to, the problem I'm having, I'm having to mount it on the back, and then gravity's pulling the front down. So like, hmm. I might need to do something plastic to keep playing around with it. Mm -hmm. Move it back there. Might put it somewhere like that. Yeah permanently glue it in mm. yeah the kit's lovely it's, gone to, it's literally holding itself together yeah yeah they are very very good fit. i must admit the fit is gonna be bob on i reckon mm. yeah excellent okay. very very nice all done very good uh just to answer the question this from uh, uh mr goff uh, is literally the cheapest schools back to school things are all in the supermarkets at the moment uh circle thing this one's by jacar but you know any of the ones like that that's to do it's just simple cheapest one you can find does it this one goes from i think it's one mil up to 36 in various increments so but again i say i learned this only about sort of five years ago and it was <laughs> like god Talk about so much easier, and it's neater, and it looks better. It's just, yeah, a lot, lot quicker. Right. What's them circle things called? Proper name? The circle template. Oh, there right. you go. What, That's what the question. What posh name? Posh name, yes. A circle-y thing. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, the schools, because the kids are going back, all the supermarkets have them in the front. Tesco's and all the rest of it, so that's yeah. always good. I've now got a JCB right out the front of the house now, so it was giving something. <laughs> Getting closer, <laughs> time that well. Right, we will call it right there. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. I uh, hope you've answered some of your questions. You've had a bit of a giggle with us making our way along. Don't forget, if you want to give us a like, that'd be absolutely lovely as well. Apparently, it helps somewhere. Uh, but everyone says get them to like, so there you go. If you can give us a thumbs up, you likey thing, that would be absolutely fantastic. So, yes, there we go. Right, we will be obviously seeing you on Monday. Got the next part of the Ural truck up, uh, that's up with you on Monday, and then obviously Tuesday, I'll be along doing something for the actual tutorial section. And then obviously Wednesday, me and Matt will be on with you as well for the PM show, and then we'll be back with you on Thursday uh, evening as well for another live show. So, thank you very much for joining us. A pleasure as always. Remember, stay safe, take care, but most of all, happy modeling. See you later guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.